Hello, this is Sarah Dippity, and today we are going to be drawing festival elephants. Here's a picture of what they look like, brought to you by thepladzebra.com. First of all, I want to tell you this is an easy lesson. This is not something that I'm going to be regaling you with my wonderful artistic skills. It's fun doodle or a great project to do with kids. Um, first of all, you want to start by drawing your elephant's face. Elephant faces are pretty easy. You start with a nice long curve for the trunk, and then you add your tusk and your ears. You can decide how big you want to make those tusks and ears. You can even make them crazy huge like mammoth and curled. It doesn't matter. Um, this is all your artistic wonderment. I like to make the ears just a little bit bigger because then I'll have a larger canvas for when I want to add my little pretty uh, doodly doos later. Uh, always start with pencil so you can erase and always draw lightly so you can erase easily. Uh, those were oil pastels from Walmart because I am a baller on a budget and I do not have the monies for that blick fancy pants oil pastels. Anyway, uh, then you outline the entire elephant with black oil pastel or gray. Gray works too. Um, after you're done with that, you're going to make the designs of your elephant's face. Now you could use oil pastel right away, or you could start with a pencil line. I decided to start the design around the eye with pencil just to kind of get myself into it and to see how it would look under the oil pastel, but you can do whatever you want. Something that should be known, once you use the oil pastel, it's not completely um, opaque, meaning you can see through it a little bit. So when you use the yellow, you're going to be able to see those pencil lines if you want a nice clean look around those really bright colors, you might want to avoid pencil then. Um, however, if you are worried about your artistic abilities and you want to have that opportunity to race, you go for the pencil first. Then I start freehanding the rest of the elephant from here. Um, I didn't want to overcrowd his body with oil pastel because I still want that gray to uh, poke through at the very end. Add a little bit of details around all of the areas here. Dots work really well because then the paint will kind of flow around it and it'll look really nice later. Adding some blending is always a good idea too. Um, using complementary colors to kind of make the colors even brighter is great. Uh, you can how it, design this elephant though however you want. If you look at the pictures online, references are always a good idea. Looking at what other elephants look like or encouraging, if you're teaching this to students, encouraging them to go out and explore and look at the elephants from the Elephant Festival or also doing some research. For instance, they do elephant polo at these events, which is hilarious. It's like pony polo, except for taller and more clumsy. I'm adding uh, designs around the body, but I'm not going to add too much more than just a few flowers. And then I'm using white, even though you can't see it now, it will really show up brightly once I add those colors later. Um, I have two different types of watercolor that I'm going to use. My old trusty uh, pink palette, just in case everything falls through with this new paint, and then the Crayola paint. I am not sponsored by them, however, but I do have an addiction to art supplies, and so I walk through the halls, and if it's under $5, I usually buy it just because fun. But before you use any new supply, always test it out. If you're using watercolor especially, you can't erase that. And so even though watercolor is in the name, it is not washable off of your paper. So then you start going, uh, really make sure you get in between all those lines, but make sure you add a lot of water to your paint as you go. If you have it too gummy or if you put it on too thick, all you're going to end up is with a sticky, dirty elephant that covers up the oil pastel anyway. So now we're about to get to the white blue and flowing. Look at that! Don't they look cool? Oh, I love that. It's like magic. Anyway, continue my excitement. Um, I ended up using the gray that was provided in the Crayola pack. It turned out to be pretty easy. It's also um, going to be great if I have younger students that can't. Uh, mix gray very easily because gray doesn't usually exist in watercolor. Usually you have to make it with water and black. Um, they're also white usually doesn't exist in watercolor packs so in order to make it you're using just water as your white. Um, watercolor is one of the most challenging mediums for artists to use which is always amazing to me why we use it with elementary school kids all the time. Probably because it's the least messy. If it gets on their hands and they bathe in it, it's still gonna wash off the next day. So here I'm going on to painting the outside. I'm using bright hot colors to paint my outside. 
of my elephant because then it'll kind of give it this warm glow to him. Uh, then I'm going to finish him off with some purple color. Now something that you should know is purple and yellow make brown. Like the ugliest, grossest, poopy brown you can possibly see. So always give yourself a color buffer between your complementary colors. Um, whenever I think about complementary colors, I always remember Christmas, the Vikings, and the Bears. Uh, blue and orange, uh, purple and yellow, and green and red. Those three combinations always make brown, which can come in handy if you don't have brown but you have those colors, but it also can be your enemy when you're making watercolor pictures and you think, oh, these are my favorite colors. I'm going to mix blue and orange together, and then you realize you've created a monster. All right, so we're just getting to the end here. If you put tape around your picture, you're going to get a nice clean edge because masking tape makes it have it look crisp and it looks like it's framed and nice. I did not do that, so I'm just getting as close to the edge without going off the page. You can cut this down later or just frame it. After you're done, never forget to sign your paper. And that is the end of this particular video. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. If you don't like this video, I don't care what you think. Ha! Anyway, bye!